In this video, we will look at the GL iNet travel router called a Slate 7 and look at the various features that this travel router provides in detail. If you want to see the overall features, the speed test of this router, then I have a video link somewhere here as well as into the description below. So now let's go ahead and explore this router in detail. So once the router starts up and then you connect to the Wi-Fi, Using the username and password on the back of the router, you have to access this IP address that is 8.1 and you'll be presented with the setup screen. So here you set up the admin password for this router and then you can click on next and then here you can set up the Wi-Fi SSID for your 5 GHz and the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi SSID. So I'm going to click on next here and with this your router is now setting up for the first time. So first thing what happens is you get presented with this screen wherein you can connect this router via an Ethernet cable or you can use it as a Wi-Fi repeater or you can share the internet from your mobile phone using the USB tethering mechanism by connecting your mobile phone via the cable to this USB port on this travel router. Now these are the various ways to connect to the internet. So right now I'm not going to do that but let's see what we get here. So now you have this nice dashboard wherein it shows all the inputs, all the outputs here as well as the various services that are present here. Here if you hover over the 5 GHz Wi-Fi you get to see this QR code to connect to your 5 GHz network or the 2.4 GHz network. Now this is something that is present on this internet page. Let's go to the wireless settings and here we can set up various information about your 5 GHz Wi-Fi, your 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and then finally we have this MLO Wi-Fi. Now MLO stands for Multi-Link link operation Wi-Fi and this is a feature from the Wi-Fi 7 standards. So what happens here is that in a normal Wi-Fi connection whenever we connect our device to the Wi-Fi it either connects to 5 gigahertz or it connects to 2.4 gigahertz. With MLO the Wi-Fi 7 enabled device can connect to this Wi-Fi with all the frequencies that are available. So right now this router has two frequencies that is 5 and 2.4 gigahertz. So the Wi-Fi 7 enabled device will connect to both the frequencies at the same time to have less latency, faster traffic and more throughput in terms of Wi-Fi connectivity. Now let's go to the clients and here in the client section you get to see the various clients that are connected to this travel router. You can find the MAC address, you can find to what it has been connected and you can also go ahead and look into the various details here. Now let's go to the cloud services. So here we have two cloud services that is Good Cloud and AstroRap. Good Cloud is a way of managing groups of routers and this is a cloud service that is provided by GLINet. Similarly, AstroRap is another advanced SD WAN platform through which what you can get is that if you are using your device somewhere remotely and you want to behave like as if you are working exactly at the same location like from your home location then using this AstroRap you get to use your home network remotely as if you are sitting at the home location. So now this AstroRap and Good Cloud are the two services you can explore about this on their website. Now let's look at our VPN configuration. So first of all we get this VPN dashboard here wherein we can set up an open VPN server. We can set up a Wirecard server by just clicking on generate configuration and then we can just start this Wirecard server. Similarly we can go to the open VPN server and we can say generate configuration and it will generate the required configuration for setting up a open VPN server on this router directly. You don't need to set up anything else anywhere. On this router you have directly an open VPN server or a WireGuard server running at the same time. So now these are the various servers right now. I have enabled both of them. You can export the client configuration for open VPN server directly. Now along with this we need to also enable DDNS domain such that we can access this VPN servers from the internet. I will show you this option later for now I'm just going to download the client configuration and I'm going to save it here. Now this was about OpenVPN, similarly in WireGuard server you can create a profile here and let's give it a name like test and I'm going to click on apply and then we get the WireGuard client configuration. I'm now going to download this configuration and save it on my desktop here. So with this 
I have the configurations for my WireGuard client as well as my OpenVPN client. Let's go ahead and import the OpenVPN client here. So right now here I have NordVPN that I can configure by specifying the username and password. I'm going to click on new group and then here I'm going to upload my OpenVPN client here. And I'm going to click on apply and my client is now configured here. I can go here and click on start and this will start the connection of this OpenVPN client with the OpenVPN server that is running on this router. Now let's go to the WireGuard client. Now here you can configure quite many VPN configuration like, like private internet access, Surfshark and you can also add manual configuration. Now in the WireGuard server configuration we had downloaded a client configuration. I'm going to upload that configuration here and then with this I have now configured a WireGuard client inside this. Now if you see here I cannot start this because if I go to this VPN dashboard, we have the open VPN client already connected. So as of now, you can only connect one VPN service at a time. You cannot connect multiple VPN services. So I need to disable the open VPN client and then I can enable the WireGuard client here. Now this was about a VPN configuration, but now here you can define the proxy policy here. So right now it is set to global proxy, but you can specify if you want to use this VPN service for a targeted domain or an IP address or based on a client device or based on a virtual LAN also. So you can select this target domain or IP and you can specify whether to use the VPN or not and you can specify the IP addresses here. Right now I'm not going to make any changes, I'm just going to keep it as global proxy here. Finally, we have this Tor section wherein you can connect to the Tor network via this router. You just have to enable this and click on apply and then you connect to the Tor network through this. Now this was about the VPN section, let's go into the application section. First of all, you get to see all the plugins that are installed on this router. Then we have dynamic DNS, which you need to enable if you are going to use this VPN service or if you're going to use the VPN servers that we have configured on this router from anywhere over the internet. So once you enable this and apply, you can access the VPN servers from anywhere over the internet. Then we have this network storage option wherein you can connect a mass storage device to the USB port. And then after you can share this drive connected to the USB port on this entire network that is connected to this router. So right now I'm going to connect a USB device to it. And then with this, I'm going to now go ahead and refresh this. So right now I have an 8 GB USB drive that is connected to it. And with this, I can share this drive using Samba as well as I can share this drive using WebDAV. So for this configuration, you go to shared folders, add a shared folder, which is right now going to be my entire USB disk. And then here I'm going to specify the protocol and I'm going to add a new user here. So for example, I'm going to add this user, click on apply and I'm going to add this user to have read write permissions and I'm going to click on apply. So now with this, I'm able to share a mass storage device that is connected to this router using this Samba share over the entire network that is connected to this router. So using this mechanism, you can actually create a portable NAS using this router. So this is really a cool feature that is available. Then let's go to this AdGuard home. You, you can enable this in order to block ads and tracking. And you can also see all the various statistics, like what has been blocked, what are the various filters that have been applied, the DNS queries and everything you can see them here. Then we have parental control, then we have zero tier and tail scale. So zero tier is yet another virtual peer to peer ethernet network. And tail scale is something that I'm very much familiar with wherein I have connected all my devices to tail scale and then I access this devices over the internet securely with end to end encrypted connections. And then with this option right now, I can just bind this entire router to this tail scale network and then access this router anyway over the internet. In the network part, you can do port forwarding. You can enable this option in order to expose a single local computer to the internet. Then you have multi WAN option wherein you get to see the status of your various input options like ethernet, repeater, tethering and the ethernet 2 and here you can specify the failover priority. Right now ethernet 1 that is your WAN port is set to the highest priority and then tethering as being the lowest priority. Then if you go in the LAN you can specify the 
router IP address as well as the range of IP address for your DHCP server. Then we have the guest network configuration. Then we have this network port management. Now in this network port management, you can decide if your current WAN port needs to act as a LAN or you can specify it as a WAN. Similarly, the LAN port which is there, you can either make it act as a WAN or a LAN. So the entire port configuration can be done dynamically using this panel here right now. Now, apart from this, we have the various network modes like router, access point, extender. Then you can enable IPv6 here. And another important feature is this drop-in gateway wherein if you enable this option here, then this router, that is this travel router, extends the functionality of your existing router. That is all the traffic that goes out or comes in through the main router would be redirected to this router before going to any of your other devices. So this is a very important feature that you can make use of. Then we have IGMP snooping and network acceleration. Now this network acceleration is an option which reduces the CPU usage but increases the speed of the traffic that has been sent out or coming in. So now when this has been enabled, it can affect a few other functionalities inside this router like the parental control, the client speed limits, the traffic statistics can get affected by this. So you have to decide now if you want this more important than these other features that are present here. Now, apart from this, you have this NAT settings wherein you can enable full cone NAT for reduced game latency and you can also enable the SIP ALG option here. Then in the system settings, you have this overview wherein it shows you the CPU usage of this router as well as the memory usage. Right now, the CPU temperature is 60 degrees, but there is an inbuilt fan inside this router also and you can set the threshold at which this fan can turn on. So right now I'm setting it to 70 degrees such that on 70 degrees the fan turns on. As of now, it has never turned on while I have done my testing. So let's see in the future if it happens. Then you have the amount of flash storage that has been used here as well as the external storage that was been connected and the device info of this travel router. Now other important setting is this toggle button setting. Now this toggle button that we have, we can program it to either have add guard home open VPN client connected or disconnected using that toggle button. So these are the various options that are available with which we can configure that toggle button. Finally, we have this advanced settings in which you can access the default user interface of WRT. Since this router is based on open WRT, you can access the default interface by using the same username and password that you specified while setting up this router here. So this is the default interface that you can make use of and you can make the changes as per your liking here. So now these were the various options that you have on this router here. And as you can see, based on what has been on, you can click on these options here and it goes directly to that settings page. So this is a nice dashboard here. Now from the touchscreen menu options, we get to see all the various interfaces and information about the various interfaces that have been connected to this router. Now you can get to see the time here as well as you can see the various statistics of the performance of this router. Then you can see the uploads as well as downloads right now since it's not connected you get this not available and then you can go ahead and connect to the Tor network by just pressing this button here. So right now if I go ahead and press this button here it will try and connect to the Tor network. Similarly, you can do this for AdGuard Home as well as for your WireGuard server. So just by pressing this button, you can connect and disconnect to the WireGuard server from this menu here. You can also change the client configurations that you have. Like for example, I have these two configurations. I can just switch to this test configuration and then with this, it will try to connect to the WireGuard server using that test configuration. You can also do this even for open VPN wherein you can select the client that you want and then after this it will try to connect to the open VPN server. Right now since it's trying to connect to the WireGuard server you cannot connect the open VPN server with this. Next here you can activate as well as deactivate individual Wi-Fi frequencies as well as you can scan this QR code in order to connect to the Wi-Fi network. Similarly, you can do this for the 5 gigahertz as well as you can do this for the MLO Wi-Fi. So right now you can see all these information here without going into the main admin panel. Now I'm planning to add this router to my DIY rack which I'm currently building and this is the panel that I have printed for this router.
So make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as hit that like button for more such videos to come. Now you can support this channel via Patreon or just by buying me a coffee. Till then, take care and I'll see you in my next one.